friends, I'm Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today I want to show you a very special place. I'll walk you through it, give you a little tour, walk you through how we created this space in our backyard. taking you in today is our kitchen garden. The kitchen garden has become just a place of refuge where I can just enjoy gardening on a smaller scale where I can just plant beautiful flowers and enjoy simple things like some lettuces and not worry so much about scale and mass productivity. So before I give you a little tour you might be wondering what is a kitchen garden? Well the simple answer is see that area right there? That is our kitchen. So a kitchen garden is a garden that's right outside your back door, really close to the kitchen, and that's a small space where you plant a lot of things that you want easily when cooking. Another thing I've really enjoyed having in this space is just beautiful flowers. Because when I'm washing dishes or when Chris is washing dishes, which we have a lot of because we have an infant and we have bottles and we have pump parts and we have his food and our food and all those things, we have a lot of dishes. And so when we're cleaning the dishes in the kitchen, we get to enjoy beautiful flowers out in the kitchen garden because we can see them right through that window. So I'm absolutely going to do that every year from now on. Before I give you a tour of the space, let's talk about how we set up this space. So we have four raised beds in our kitchen garden. Each bed is six by three. So we roughly have 18 square feet of growing in each of the beds, 72 square feet of growing. These beds are almost two feet tall. So they're super tall for raised beds, which sounds expensive in terms of filling them with soil. So we didn't fill them with soil. What else did we do? Well, we followed the hookah culture style of gardening in these raised beds. Let me show you exactly what we did to fill these beds. We're gonna jump back a couple of months to see that process. Okay, so we've got the garden beds in place in their preliminary positions and the last step is basically just to ensure that we have the right spacing between the beds so that we have a good sized walkway down the middle um, and through the ends. And then we want to make sure that they're pretty level as well so that both for aesthetic purposes and just for drainage purposes to make sure that when we water, when we water the beds that things evenly drain throughout the bed. So Malachi and I are here are going to uh, get to work basically just digging out the holes or digging out the digging out holes where the posts are in the corners and the parts of the bed. Um, and then we're going to be using the level to make sure that they're level and we're going to get this looking really nice. So go ahead and watch us. Malachi, you're going to help me? No. It is time to fill the kitchen garden and we are following a hygge culture style for filling these beds. We are starting with some logs and rotted wood that we just foraged from around the property and then we're going to be putting down some rotted hay, some other organic matter that we have from the farm animals, finally fin finishing off with some fresh compost that we're actually going to be going to pick up because we don't really have our compost system down yet. But that is a work in progress and we promise to get better at that. So let me show you what we're starting with. So here are the beds. They're quite tall, they're about 22 inches, so almost two feet. And we are starting with some wood. This one's the most filled. We're gathering these rotted logs and sticks from the property. And we're filling each bed with a good layer of wood before anything else.
right guys, so we're back over here at the raised beds and we're continuing to fill them up with some different materials in order to build up the base and not have to use as much soil. So far we've got layers of logs in all the beds and currently we're on our second layer which we're trying to fill up with our bunny compost. So that's consistent of uh, the bunny poop obviously, urine, the uh, wood bedding that they, the wood pellet bedding that they use and the hay that they waste. Um, so that's a nice little mixture of compostable ingredients. And so we've got two of the beds filled already. We've got another load right here and probably another couple loads that we can get. So we're going to fill up these two beds right here. And uh, then we'll go on to our next layer, which is probably going to be hay. And after that, we might be high enough to start doing soil. So follow along. <laughs> adding composted manure to the kitchen garden. Malachi just woke up from a nap. We are going to go show you what he's doing because this means I can plant the kitchen garden really soon. I planted a lot of little baby plants and some seeds in here. Things um, like flowers, like cucumbers. I planted a couple squash and watermelon, which you will see in a second, and they are crazy. I planted some carrots and some radishes. I planted a lot of sunflowers, which are so tall. You can see them right up here behind me. So I planted a lot of stuff. And again, I'm gonna take you back just a, a month and a half or so ago, and you can watch the process of planting in these beds. Well, hey friends, we are back in the garden, back in the kitchen garden today, and I'm gonna finish up planting some starts that I have. I have some teddy bear sunflowers that I wanna get planted in here. I have um, some sorrel that I think I'm gonna plant in here. I have some melons and some different kinds of squash, and I think I'm gonna plant some stuff in here. So. We gotta get these two beds filled real quick. I've got the soil ready for them, so we're putting two bags of compost in each, each of the beds. And then I'll start planting them out just like these two in the front and get, get everything planted. I also have some sunflower seeds, carrots, and radishes. So I'm gonna plant a cutting sunflower and then a sunflower called moonshine, which is also just a shorter, about four feet tall as opposed to, you know, like your seven to 10 foot tall sunflowers. And then I have white icicle radish and just some scarlet Nantes carrots. sun's coming out so it's getting hot um, okay so let's go ahead and get the teddy bear sunflowers planted 
let's get some basil planted. Um, I'm gonna plant some sorrel, and then I'll plant a few melons and squash. It's a dizzy day. I would get... I'm gonna plant, I have four teddy bear sunflowers, and I'm gonna plant all four in one bed in each corner of the bed. So I started all these guys in soil blocks, and if you're curious about soil blocks, I'll be sharing more info about this soon, but I do have a video about soil blocking. Um, I have these honey nut uh, butternut squash, which are like a miniature butternut, they're my favorite. And then I have some Tulsi or holy basil, so I'm gonna plant th these guys and these guys in this raised bed. I've also got some pink okra and Clemson spineless okra that I'm gonna pop in over here. Then I've got some sugar baby watermelon that I'm also gonna pop into the raised bed since, since these guys are a little small, little small watermelon. So let me go ahead and time lapse this footage while I plant everything in, cause it's gonna slow me down too much to record each little bit. Do, let's do a tour of the kitchen garden. Do you recall when we were young, running from all things at once without thinking twice? Catch up, and that we would be the ones left behind. The In this lovely space right here, we have lots and lots of zinnias. I think this was about eight plants, and as you can tell, it is so full and so lush. Here's where we had a romaine, and then I planted some cilantro in here, since cilantro can benefit from some shade because it does not like heat. Take you back into this bed. This is um, sorrel, which has gone to seed. Sorrel is actually a perennial green. You can see the leaves down here. That's what the leaves look like. And we have some beautiful basil in here. I'm just gonna pull off these seeds. You don't want the seed heads of the basil. It prevents it from growing. It actually kills the plant. So we'll pull off those seed heads. Beautiful basil in here. Some more zinnias. And we have a couple of tomato plants. Now these tomato plants look really healthy, but they do actually have late blight. You can actually see the damage in the fruit, but I'm just letting them go in here and seeing if we can get any fruit off of them. In here, we have a beautiful pink okra. I let that okra get too big, but we have a lot more okra coming in on this, on this plant in here. More basil, a holy basil plant that has gone wild. Over here in this bed, I have some teddy bear sunflowers, which have already all flowered, and now I'm just waiting for the seed heads to form. And these guys, which are gonna flower soon, 
We have a squash plant that has gone rogue. Let's see. I mean, don't look at these leaves. Those look very sad. I can actually cut those off and, and uh, throw those away. But this pumpkin is all the way over there. And there are some nice sized fruits on here too. The marigold plant in here. Some more holy basil. And I wish I could give you guys smell a vision. I could say the best smell in the garden of any of the plants, I would say it's holy basil. It is the most amazing smell. It's also called Tulsi if you're looking for seeds. I have to show you guys this rogue pumpkin. It is crazy. So it spills all the way out of the bed, comes all the way over here. Here's a fruit. I don't think you guys can see the size. It's like that big. Huge. So this is the other view of the kitchen garden. You honestly can barely see the beds. Because the watermelon and the squash and pumpkin have just overflown so much. Here's another angle. You can see some of the watermelon fruit there. You got some a bunch of fruit over there. We have those two beds, which I just pointed out. And then in here, we have a bunch of carrots. Here's some dill. We've got some perennials, like this butterfly weed. It's a type of milkweed over here, great for monarchs. A couple hot pepper plants. Um, this passion vine, which I'm gonna move, is actually still in its pot here. A couple of tomato plants, and I just saw some fruit on there, actually. It's a cherry watermelon so the fruit right here which is almost ready it's another fruit forming down there i just planted some cabbages in here and then we have um, some yarrow and some thyme over here this green stalk is mostly petering out and i need to actually reset it which i will do soon it's going to come inside in the winter but we do have some kale some zinnias. The zinnias have done really well. Um, lots of different kale in here. Lots of zinnias. Some snapdragons. And then um, some Swiss chard over here. More kale. And some bolted romaine. And then finally, we have lots of beautiful multi headed sunflowers in this last bed. Um, as well as some cucamelons. These guys are doing okay, not real hot, but there's some cucamelons on there. They're pouring out of each corner. Uh, a cabbage that's forming a head. A bunch of mustard greens that have gone to seed. I need to pull these guys out. Snapdragons that have just finished off. I think I'm going to save some of the seeds of these guys. Some pepper plants. This one's a Tabasco pepper plant. You can see all the little baby peppers in there. And I think this is a habanero in here, actually. Some more cabbage. Just these crazy sunflowers. They're so pretty. I've been running. I'm really excited about this space and I can't wait to show you it transform over the years to come. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen garden tour. This is my dream garden space and it's something that I had a vision for and we created together. It's such a joy to me to be able to share it with all of you. I want to say bye bye to our friends so you can go to sleep. Bye bye!